All right, let's call this to order. Um, roll call. Jury Berman. Oh, Sorry. hey, there's Sadie. Oh, no, you're good. That's okay. I couldn't get on Pendleton Avenue from the alley. Really? 10 minutes. Oh. 10 minutes. Wow. Kate Edwards. George Harris. Sandy Butler. Bob Post. All right. Woohoo! So we do have a quorum except for the minutes, right? Correct. Okay, so we, we have a quorum. Vote on those. All right, now I guess election of officers? Correct. So um, are there any nominations for Jeff? Do we just have president and vice president for HPC? I think we do. No, treasure. Treasure. Okay. Yep, the three offices. Okay. Um, so are there any nominations mm -hmm. for president? Uh, sure, that's fine. I'll nominate. George. George. I finally got parliamentary procedure down <laughs> or whatever, you know, no, Robert's Rules of Order. So, yeah. All right. Are there any other nominations for president? Okay. Jeff, do I just, what do I do? Roll call vote? Or? Yeah, just say all those in favor of uh, that slate of officers say aye. Any opposed? And okay. off we go. All right. Uh, any, uh, all those in favor of George Harris's president say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right. Same for vice president. Okay. I know he's it. Okay. Are there any other nominations? All right. All those in favor of Sandy Butler as vice president, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Okay. And then we need a treasurer, which... It's not a whole lot of work to that. I did that for four I'm years. Looking in your direction. You are. <laughs> yes. I don't know the last. I I mean, I've been here three years and I've never had to use the treasurer. So. Well, that's up to you guys. If you, <laughs> you want to pass the buck, but if you want I'll to keep I, it on, I had that position and it was probably the most easiest position I've ever had in my life. So I'll say that we nominate Kate for that position. Okay. Are there any other nominations for treasurer? And you will tutor me for soon. Oh, yeah. yeah. If we ever need yeah. it. <laughs> Just like, I, here's the money we got. Right. Oh, I know we have money. Yes. Then I do too. Yeah. So uh, if no other nominations. Oh, wait. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Now, let me preface the fact that I am going to be going for the next facade grant. Is that going to, am I going to hinder that by being treasurer? No. No. I don't think so. Okay. Are you going after it or is your husband going after it? It doesn't matter. I would have your husband sign the paper. Yep. Okay. I was just going to recuse myself. But yeah. yes, and That's you can do that. And okay. then I would have him sign the paperwork so that there's no questions. Ask the attorney on that. Jeff? We may want to fill out a conflict of interest for him just to get that out there and file that with the state. So that way there's no question at all what you just brought up. Is but there is a state form of that. We can get it to you. Is that regardless of if she uh, is the treasurer or not, just a board? Yeah, member? I, I don't think I don't think that matters. I, okay. But um, but I I do think the conflict of interest form just to cover herself is the best way to go. Okay. 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 Um. So uh, no other nominations for treasurer. Um. All those in favor of Kate Edwards as treasurer, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. The treasurer will have some work at this meeting if that one vote takes place about spending money. Do we have an LNRJ? I think yes. Well, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> I do it. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that we have um, on the agenda is um, Sandy has worked diligently to get some amendments to our 2010 ordinance to bring it a little more into conformity, update it with the times. Um, so what I have done is, um, and you you have this in your G drive too, um, is the ordinance and then the proposed amendments. So what we'll do is we'll go through each one, um, discuss if there is any discussion. Some of these are pretty obvious. And then at the end, you'll make a voted uh, recommendation to town council to update the ordinance uh, for these amendments, however you discuss them or however they're agreed upon. No. Okay. Are you talking about the Broadway ordinances? No, this is just 2010-16. Okay. Yes. Right. So this is just the ordinance establishing the HPC. Oh, okay. So the first one that we have is uh, on page two. You'll see there uh, the classification section. This only has um, four. Um, and I know, Kate and Jerry, I'll try and bring you up to speed as much as possible, but 
Um, we updated our design guidelines last year, um, and we now have, we use the, um, there's five categories per the, the state interim report. Uh, one of those is reference, and it's missing here. Um, frankly, the, the definition of non-contributing is much more close to reference in this particular language. Um, so what we're looking to do with one, one and two here is to add the reference language as well as update the non-contributing. Um, non-contributing is, they wrote it really nicely in the ordinance, um, but it's supposed to mean um, something that is considered later or adversely altered intrusions, like things that do not fit, but are just in the district because they were built there, you know, whatever. Um, so that's the first two amendments is adding reference because we do have a lot of reference buildings um, and updating that non-contributing um, to be kind of, that's how we've been using it in the de, in the design guidelines and in the inventory is what the interim report says. Like I said, this is a, this is a little nice, <laughs> um, but the contributing and notable uh, and outstanding are are just fine the way that they're written. Um, so that's the first one. Any discussion on either of those and um, the additions of those languages? Mm -hmm. So in the purple, this is the first one you're talking about. Yeah, first and second. The first two. Correct. So they're both definitions. Good. And he's, okay. My question is about, perhaps I don't understand what it means here, but it says these entries do not meet the criteria for an inventory because of their date of construction. Well, that part, if it's after 50 years ago, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Style, I have no idea why any style would not be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, general incompatibility with their historical and architectural surroundings. Uh, there's buildings that are considered extremely significant that look like spaceships compared to anything we have here in town mm -hmm. that are in historic districts and are National Register listed. Mm -hmm. And so I don't understand the last two parts there. That's just what's written in the interim report. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if there were to be a building like that and spaceship building, we can have it be listed as contributing. Contributing is kind of our go to. Um, while we do have some reference and some non contributing buildings, um, they're, they're not as prominent as contributing buildings, which are more so like if it fits the the rhythm the density um, and it contributes to the fabric of your district mm -hmm. that's generally what it's listed as so as far as that exact language goes i'm just going out of what's in the report from the uh Archae preservation and archaeology department well it just sounds like somebody could arbitrarily say that um, this building wouldn't be significant enough. Well, because that would be up to the, the board to determine. So if we were to have a, a building designation that, you know, I think it's one way, Sandy thinks it's another, that's this board would be the one to decide that, I think. Yes. To where with the other definitions, um, resources important to the density, continuity of the area's historic fabric, um, those can be listed in the National Register, um, but I, I, I think we're okay. It hasn't come up as an issue thus far, at least. Until now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. May I ask just for some clarification? Sure. You just mentioned that there is uh, an example of a reference Mm -hmm. property yeah. what would qualify as a reference property that i would Ooh, be familiar with off the top with? of my head hmm. Hmm. let's see do i have that design guideline in here i don't actually know off the top of my head oh, that's just, fine i know there's green dots on that map that okay. i have and green means reference okay um but I can, we can look that up later. I can send that. I was just you. curious. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Anything else with that? Bob, I think if we find it's not working in some way, we can always update the ordinance and we can update our language and our design guidelines to stray from what the interim report says. Um, but as, as far as I can tell, when I when I Google like the um, historic building classifications, those those do still come up. So well, when it gets down to the end of number two, it still seems offensive to me says these entries do not meet the criteria from inventory because of the data construction style and our channel and compatibility with the historical and architectural surrounding. Well, across the street, we've got, it looks like two buildings that the- uh, Right here? The headbangers and then the mm -hmm. tuxedo shop is, mm -hmm. that was one building when it was built. Mm -hmm. And it's got two owners now. And it was amazing when it was built. And it's probably listed as non contributing now, but if somebody wanted to come in and do something to take it back to an earlier period, they're going to change windows. Uh, I think we would insist that they change windows back to what you can see shadowed out down the stucco there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's just. And that would be the case. Mm -hmm. Because we would we would not, as a board, I I'm assuming we would not approve it to be modernized more than what it is right now. Correct. If they start right. doing construction on it, remodeling, right? I call I like to use the word restoration. It would have to go back to the original. Order. Correct. What we can document as the original. Order. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Um. So our next um definition is a uh, routine maintenance. So this says work for which no COA is uh, required. Um, I figured we should maybe add, uh, there is a whole section on maintenance. So referring to that section for standards and such, uh, just to refer to that. So routine maintenance is things that are either um, deemed immediately unsafe or, uh, you know, um, it, well, I guess they're routine. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Um, but any major significant changes in, say, you know, a window, if it's the size of a window, the cut of it, um, you know, things like that, I, I wouldn't necessarily call uh, maintenance if you're kind of changing any sort of look of it. But building owners do have the right to maintain their buildings as they sit. So I think you could use our next door building as an example mm -hmm. of that. I agree with that. Yeah, I didn't agree with it. I didn't. I know. I, <laughs> but I'm trust okay. me, I think I, I think we we you know we avoided pushing the owner too far. Yes. Yeah. By saying okay, this is a maintenance issue rather than being a restoration issue. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. So just having that in there to refer to what yeah, what exactly so that kind of process <laughs> means. So, I will I will add that language. Um, third one that I have is um about paint colors. So um. <laughs> The town and the HPC and the uh, DNR, who has the Archaeology and Preservation Department, does not uh, dictate any color changes. Um, so while that's in here and it says uh, conspicuous change in A, B, C, D, E, F, G or involving exterior color changes, we we don't need to have that in there. I don't know why it's in there. I don't know. When it was put, when I put this together years and years ago, it was not in there. So I don't know why it was added. And we've never done paint. Yeah, never done paint. I mean, there's like recommended palettes for decades and things like that. But, but it's recommended. It's yeah, not controlled. It's so I will um, remove that language. Um, any discussion on that one? No? Okay. Um, just as we had kind of discussed earlier, um, the commission shall further classify and designate all buildings and structures within a proposed historic district as follows. We're missing those last two uh uh, classifications, even though those two might not be eligible for a register, they are still within our local, we do still have some within our local district. Uh, so we need to put that in there, but we use those classifications sometimes. So, uh, okay. Next, I have another um, instance involving uh, exterior color. We we don't do that. Uh, and then the other thing we don't uh, have any real say over is light fixtures. 
Um, within our UDO, we have light standards. So if someone wants to put, you know, a light outside of their door, that's that's fine. They don't need a CLA for that. It just has to fit our light organs, which is like down shielding. It has to be so high up off the ground so somebody doesn't whack their head on it, you know, stuff like that. So, and it has a certain foot candle for residential as opposed to commercial. So that's probably where that would be dictated. If a structure had an original light fixture, mm -hmm. then I think any change in that should come in front of the HPC. Now, like what's, what's an example of an external light fixture? Then if somebody has an exterior light fixture. Yeah, okay and it's original mm -hmm. and they wanted to change it uh i would certainly dissuade them doing that i think that should be okay no that's a good for, that's a good point yeah it should be underneath for a van so the each okay I but how things, many of those we have in town now i can't think of a one i can't think of one either well they'll be i, I can't either if it was a certain style that they would be able to do maybe even an updated version like, yeah, that's, tech, that's a good point. Technologically wise, because I mean, yeah. if it's a, you know an LED rather than an old mm -hmm. gas light. Yeah. So, but as long as it remains in the style of the original. Yeah. Should we put language in there to what he said? I mean, we can honestly just keep light fixtures, and that way, if there's one where we have, you know, the the staff doesn't um, feel comfortable, you know doing that they have the option to bring it before HBC. I think that's a good idea. And most because it's like, you know, um if it's if it's just a new structure, it, it doesn't need, you know, like a on the Hayden building, John put sconce lights yeah. on the side. It doesn't need a HBC approval for that. But if we were to have a significant light fixture where it's part of the exterior, part of the historic fabric of it. Yeah, so that just leaves us the purview to be able to do that. Say yes or no, Correct. basically. Yeah. So it sounds like a little bit of conflict in a way. If uh, if John Oliver had a building and say that's 1930s or whatever that structure is, uh -huh. uh, it would be nice to say, John, would you please use light fixtures that are appropriate for that period of your building? Mm -hmm. Well, if, if you want to, or if there are buildings that come before you and you want to include that as part of your COA, you can. If it's for like a full remodel of the exterior, like what John did, you could put conditions upon that. As Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, um, you can do these kind of windows, but we need to see these kinds of lights on it. Kind of like with planning commission, what, what they do with rezones, you know. That's right. Okay. That's right. And, Good example is the post office. There's some oh, original, yeah. original fixtures that I used to be there. Yeah. 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 And yeah. if the government wanted to change to something else, yeah. Uh, hopefully they would know they need to come to the HPC and discuss that. I would hope so, but it's the feds, so, you know. <laughs> Maybe. But Sandy's going to go down and talk to the president. I'll go down and talk to her. <laughs> no, but, that, but, but, but bringing good, that up, I mean, point. we're 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 on the national register, and you can't use federal money to go in. Right? Yeah, so they wouldn't be able to do that. Absolutely. So, how about I leave the light fixture aspect in here and just take out the color change part, exterior paint color change? Okay. Um, so, I'm... exteriors or colors. Next one I've got, I think is the last one. Um, let's see. Oh, the paint color. So it says the section is intentionally left blank. Do you want me to add language that says the HPC does not have purview over paint color? Or just leave it? Can you just drop it? No, because they're going to ask about it. Yeah, I could just remove the whole section. If you want, well, then you have to do, go through and recount everything. Do you want to say anything about color recommendations, though? Is, is there a color palette that that it, for that I particular think, period? I mean, Bob would know more about that. I think that certain paint companies have recommended historic colors for mm -hmm. certain years or decades you can look at. Yeah. Um, can so we just put on there, we recommend historically correct colors. Yeah. yeah. Recommend. Yeah. Yes, recommend. We can definitely put recommend. I think Sorry. that might take care of everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 23 years ago, 24 years ago, when I bought my building, 
the building next to me was painted this hideous color. Terrible, terrible. <laughs> and I remember town hall coming down and talking to him and made him change the color. Really? Thank goodness. What, it was it? what color was it? Well, they call it baby shit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Baby's for <laughs> summer. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like so, a terrible that's color. A yeah. yeah. But it was it was terrible. Thank goodness they changed it. They did change it. So I think recommendation is yeah. Smart. Colors. Okay. Yeah. We can definitely do that. How about spicy mustard? <laughs> Hey, that's my front door. Yeah, I guess they have. Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> it's a good color. Yeah. The true mustard color. I've grown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Right. George, you can back up fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, her, no, actually, you're. Yes, that's not the thing. I think like the cool and the Oh, right. right. Yeah. Okay. So um, then, what I need from you guys is a um, a motion to approve the amendments for 2010-16 as discussed, or excuse me, 2010-06 as discussed, and then a second, and then a vote. Do we have a motion? I'll make that motion that we appro approve the proposed amendments to ordinance 2010-06. 16. No, it's 06. It is 06. Oh. On okay. the top of the sheet, it says. Oh, it does. Oh, it says sorry. one six. It's supposed to be up of 06. Do I need to repeat that again? You all know no. <laughs> it's the HBC. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's 06. I thought that's what it was. Need a second. We have a second. Anyone? I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Awesome. Cool. Um, so this will go to the April 11th um, town council to update the ordinance. Um, so the other thing I have, uh, we've done this before when we were going through some architecture changes for, if you go to the back side of that purple sheet, um, we've, we've done this before, uh, with the, with planning commission. So when the planning commission was updating some architecture standards for, downtown business and the RC zoning, which is that um, historic housing fabric around downtown. We had some discussions about some things we could bring to them with you guys being the historic experts. So I'm kind of looking at that again, because the last time we had looked at the um, materials table within the UDO, one of the planning commission members asked me if the way that this uh, uh, statement is written in the UDO was it okay with you guys? Um, so it, you'll read along on that. Basically, um, our UDO states that there are some additional limits for certain materials in, in downtown business. Um, EFIS is, is a material and a product that has come up a lot lately. Um, and the way the UDO is written right now, it states that EFIS in downtown business can only be used as an accent for a building uh, at a maximum of 20% usage. So with that said, um, because EFIS is allowed in like a lot of our other districts um, without any sort of percent limit or anything like that, um, I kind of wanted to pick your brain on on if that's appropriate, um, as far as what it would look like, I think EFIS, and Bob, you can probably speak to this better than I can, EFIS can look like just about anything. It's external insulation finishing systems. So it's uh, uh, insulation, but it can look like anything. So it can look like stucco, or it can look like brick, or it can look like split-based cloth, or it can look like wood. Um, as far as I'm aware. So if you're asking my recommendation, I'd recommend that instead of 20%, it'd be zero. <laughs> zero percent EFIS? We, I mean, we can do that if you don't think it's appropriate. Down What's there. the longevity of the product? I've heard it's about 60 years. Oh. So. Um, Am I right in thinking, you know, did they use that on Wolfie's? No, I don't think there's did any. Did they use it on Wolfies. the New Dollar Store? Yes. Okay. So it is on that building. Yeah. It's the um, the the fake looking brick that's kind of the band at the bottom is Ephus. Yeah. Um, and then there's Ephus on the new Three Rivers Credit Union. Okay. And it's the brick and then this the smooth face. 
part of it. So it has been used in our community. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So but not downtown. Not, not not that I'm aware of because there hasn't been anything like new built. Um, I'm this is what I'm thinking of that it would be used for mostly would be if we had an infill project where the price of brick might be too much to build the structure and it's built with EFIS. But that's just kind of my thoughts. Bob, you want to elaborate on that at all? Why it's zero instead of 20? I'd probably change the zero to minus two. <laughs> okay. I'm hearing negative, but I'm not hearing a lot. Well, isn't there... There's, there's a great... Uh, is it 24th or something of this month? Okay. And I think you sent it to me. Mm -hmm. And I registered for the first one and I couldn't pull it up on the internet. It's discussing appropriate materials. Uh -huh. And I couldn't even pull it up and look at it after the webinar was presented. I don't know why. And then they sent an apology to me that you know some of the areas couldn't pick that up or didn't work. Oh, and that's it. weird. I've never had an APC do have that issue. Yeah. Is that the one I sent to you or did did Hannah send that to you? I don't know. Because I forwarded it to the historic Fall Creek members. That's the one on the 21st of this month. Is that yes. the 21st? Yeah. Yes. And that would be the third one that they've had. The second one, it's my fault. I got busy on the job and didn't make it to it. But that would be an answer. And I think Maybe we. I wait think the answer what... would be zero percent. Okay, and if the, if that's what we need to change it to, then then that's fine because anything in this downtown business always goes through you guys anyway. Um, and it our design guidelines kind of are just supposed to be in conjunction with the UDO. Um, so if if we want to hold off on that one, that's totally fine to kind of see what that seminar might speak to. It might change yeah. my prejudice. Might, probably yeah, not. <laughs> probably not. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, okay, so then what would your opinion be on you know Tyler Martin and filling the skip tooth over here where the where the overhang is with the ATM? If you wanted a, a brick looking building and bricks expensive, you know, what what would be the next route? Wouldn't it be something like Ethos, like a fake I brick? I, I would suggest he save another two or three years and then do it. Did well, <laughs> I thought I read something in the paperwork that you sent me via email mm -hmm. to just read through the ordinances and whatnot. I thought I said, I thought I read something about like no break, fake brick facade. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're that if that's what you're referring mm -hmm. to for over there, Do you know, where that was, was that in the design guideline? I think it's in the design guideline. Okay, but I agree with what Bob's saying. I mean, we're we're a community that has historic buildings mm -hmm. and if they don't have the money to actually make it proper then just wait until they do because we start putting fake things up i think we're destroying the whole character of the town Very i agree point. yeah i would tend to agree too yeah um okay well why don't we just table that one um and we'll bring it up you know next mm -hmm. month or after we get that meeting in so we can kind of see where we're at with that um, I would say more than likely, uh, keeping it at this 20% would probably be the minimum. Um, Jeff, I'm just kind of thinking not necessarily fair housing, but like, uh, the allowance of certain, you know, builds or materials, like you don't want to completely strangle hold. You have a little more leeway in a historical district like this, but, mm -hmm. but no, I, it, it's a good point. Yes. Well, I mean, case in point, if Martin mm -hmm. wants to put in a building, like he said, is proposing mm -hmm. a parking lot there, mm -hmm. and he wants to keep it architecturally within, you know, the, the rest of the town, sure. as far as the look, how much of that would we allow him to do in Eva's material? Well, if if this stays that, it would be 20%. Yeah, okay. So, only, the maximum okay. 20%. So. Yeah. And this also says metal wood shakes it well accent to highlight architectural details on the exterior but may cover no more than 20 percent of the exterior so um maybe some of those things would be 
uh, using EFIS to repair or replace things that have crumbled away or fallen off as a more stable material. Maybe like um, Dr. Lau's building where there's some kind of, I know it's stone, uh, accents that run between limestone. the limestone that right. run between the windows. It's limestone coins and then underneath the second and the third floor windows. Yeah. There's limestone from one end of the building to the other. Right. So maybe if it was something like an accent like that where it's super, super deteriorated and you can't get limestone in there, this would be a, a stable alternative accent. I replaced a lot of limestone cells. I'm just worst just case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to think of examples because it was brought up at Planning Commission. So I, I think it would probably be a good question. I plan on sending that day here and mm -hmm. that would be a question that we would have for them. Yeah. I'll because put that on here then. Well, there's three of them speaking, so surely there's enough knowledge there that they'd be able to give us some good advice. Yeah. And even if it's just a small piece, you know, we can throw that in there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe fabricating something that matches another piece, or yeah. a medallion or something like that. Every single piece of limestone that's ever been made can be easily made because we have a major limestone production in Indiana. Mm -hmm. It used to be the quarry in Pendleton at the reformatory. The buildings in Washington and New York were built with that because it was better limestone than what was available in and then, Bedford. And then they built the prison on top of it? No. The prison. The prison. Bedford put it out of business oh. because prison labor was seven cents an hour. And that was not fair competition, even though it's better stone. The quarry is still there. Oh. It's a lake. Hmm. And there's a quarry house on the intersection there on that corner where you go out. Uh, I call it Ferromatory Road, but you yeah. go out that. You yeah. can make a left to go to the uh, Hall Creek Regional Waste. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a there's a structure there that more than likely trucks would go underneath and they'd get loaded with mm -hmm. material. And it's still there. It's still there. It's wow. heavy. And the pond's there too. The pond is yeah. the pond. As a child, I remember that, and I was amazed. We had such an immensely deep hole, and I've been told <laughs> that the the state police will have scuba diving there because it's the deepest thing around. And I believe it's a hundred and some feet deep. Oh, well, if you're going to do water training, <laughs> that's too deep. That's, well, no, it's something. But Sandy pulled this up too about the meeting and the, it's preservation brief 16 the use of substitute materials on historic building exteriors. Okay. And Okay. That's so, going to be what date again here, Sandy? Is that the NAPC mm -hmm. one I just signed us up for? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, if I'm not mistaken, it's the 21st. It's Thursday, isn't it, at 1 o'clock? Um, yes, it is at 1 on the 21st. He's a 1 to 2.30. Mm -hmm. So you guys are welcome to come to Town Hall. We, we uh, host webinars in the conference room over here. Um, I'll send that out to everyone again. But it's nice because the, the chairs are very comfortable. And there's a big screen TV. Mm -hmm. You can bring popcorn. It's it, we had fun last time. Yeah, we learned a lot. This one was art and historic districts. It was a really significant webinar. So, um, okay, so we will just table that one. Um, so that is all that. Oh no, we have to vote on our donation amount. Um, for using the PAS oh, yes. gallery for the open house. So, Sandy, what have you and um, Pendleton Settlement usually? We paid them $100. Okay. We have that in our coffers. So, yeah. Um, I think that's a perfect. I think that's fine. Okay. It was wonderful. I mean, I'm just, we're so fortunate that we have PASS. We have that building. I know. It's, it's wonderful. wonderful. It was nice. Yeah. yeah. That, that whole event was really fun. We, we talked about doing that again. Maybe yes. In fall. I definitely we'll think see. we should. Yeah. It would be good. So I'll make um, a motion. Do you need a motion yes. on this? I'll make a motion that we uh, pay PAS $100 for use of their event for you. Do we have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Also Done. Okay. Perfect. All right. We've got this. Um, okay. 
I did not have anything else. So did we already have oaths? I was supposed to do oaths on our new people. We did. Oh, we did. Good. Yep. I missed that. No, we are good to go. So that is all that I have. Um, and I will send out that NAPC webinar. You can um. Actually, no, that's not one that you can sign up individually for because it's our town of Huntington organization. Mm -hmm. one, so you can't, you gotta come here, can't zoom in on your own. <laughs> Did we um, take care of the stable since they were uh, serving as the? <laughs> where I'm still waiting on an invoice. Oh, okay. But okay. I will, when I get it, I'm... will that be yeah, our budget? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's your budget, Katie. Our budget. There's money there. Though. All right. <laughs> so April 9th is our next one. If we have anything, if not, it'll be May. Um, I'm still getting our inventory reclassified. Remember, we were working on that last year because it didn't have all the buildings in the district. It only had the contributing, the outstanding and notables. So we'll look at that and um, approve that addition get there. I did want to welcome Katie and Jerry to their board. And they, yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for being here. And it's your it's a learning curve. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> I know. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> okay. If you have any questions, ask Sandy or Bob. No, <laughs> you've been here a while. I've been here a while. <laughs> well, no, because I'll just refer you to Sandy or Bob. Yeah. <laughs> you live closer. Than me. Oh, right. Right. You'd be right. great. Much better. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, and we got nobody online, so we right. are good to go. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Who wants to stay here? Okay.